Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to a head-to-head-to-head -to -head -to -head between three watches, all trying rather hard to look like a Tudor Ranger, but for much less money. The Ranger was an interesting release for Tudor last year. I like it myself, a very simple three-hander in the Rolex Explorer tradition, with a case of a Black Bay 58, but not the dive bezel. And there was a little bit of excitement when it launched, but after that died down, I think many people decided it was a little bit mid, as they say, and it was generally overshadowed by the release of the Black Bay Pro and then the Pelagos 39, which was by far Tudor's biggest release of 2022. Regardless of its popularity and public perception, however, it was not too long before our friends on AliExpress decided to release their own much more affordable lookalikes, and I have got three of them in for review today. The first is by San Martin and costs approximately $250. The second is by Proxima and costs approximately $250. And the third is by Pagani and costs approximately $100. All of those prices considerably less than the $3,150 that Tudor will charge you for a Ranger. But this isn't a $10,000 original today, so the ratios are smaller. The gap between original and homage is about as close as I like to go before the argument for saving up for the real thing becomes more valid. Now you saw the pop-up. San Martin sent me the San Martin. Proxima sent me the Proxima and I bought the Pagani myself. I will leave links to all three watches in the description of the video. Obviously, feel free to shop around and find the best deals that you can. Now, two of the watches get my thumbs up today, but one of them gets my thumbs down. Which one? Let's flip the camera and find out. All right, let's get into it and let's have a look at all three watches together in the same shot. And it's pretty obvious pretty early that as much as they've all been copying Tudor's homework, there are similarities across the board, but there are also differences. There are differences in dial tone with the San Martin being grey-black, the Pagani a rich deep black, and the Proxima somewhere in between. There are also differences in size with the San Martin being 38.5, the Pagani 36.5, and the Proxima somewhere in between once more. You can also see that the Proxima has a date window. Wait, what? Proxima. What are you doing? One simply does not put a date complication on a homage of a watch that does not have a date complication because it looks awful, especially with a rather unusual numeral font that doesn't match the ones used on the rest of the watch. Thankfully, the Proxima is available in both date and no date versions. Talking of versions then, the San Martin, as discussed, around the $250 mark, link in the description, available in either Fotina or white dial print, in this 38.5mm size, or in a smaller 36.5mm, all the same price, all around that 250. Proxima available in date or no date as discussed. Logo, no logo, or ghastly unicorn logo. Bang on 250 before you start adding any applicable vouchers if you opt for the PT5000, but all the way up to $380 if you opt for a Salita SW200. And the Pagani, the only option here is whether you go for a regular box or a big box. I'll give you a clue, go for the regular box. Just over $105 before you start adding vouchers. Delivery costs and taxes may or may not apply, obviously, depending where in the world you reside. All right, let's have a look at each watch individually then, and I'll discuss the relative merits of each one and how they compare to each other, starting with the San Martin. You know I'm a big fan of this brand. They make the best manufactured watches on AliExpress, I think, by some margin. Nice packaging, nice presentation. One of these little plastic screw cases, lots of protective material always. And underneath you'll find the two full-size spare links that I had to remove, a signed dated warranty card, instruction manuals, a couple of tools, and a tiny dog tag for your favourite action man. All three brands had a good look at the Tudor Ranger, but it seems that San Martin looked the hardest. Not only is this watch sized closest to the Ranger, but it's also closest in terms of case shape, case finish, and bezel treatment, with a brushed bezel rather than a high polished bezel. 38.5mm in diameter as discussed, with a thickness of 12.1. That's really quite nice considering this watch is powered by the Seiko NH35 and has a piece of top hat sapphire crystal covering the dial. Lug to lug I measure at 46.3, 20mm between the lugs, a nice taper on the bracelet down to under 16, back up to 18 for the clasp. Sized up for me, it weighs in at 127 grams with those two links removed. It's an NH35 as discussed, and there is 100 meters of water resistance with the help of a screw down crown. 
Case finish is really, really nice. Super fine brushing on most surfaces, but with a high polish chamfer on the lugs and a little high polish transition on the bezel as well. Perhaps you can see that in this shot. The bezel has a brushed upper surface and brushed vertical sides, but with just a little bit of polish to break it up in between. It looks really good. It's very nicely done. The crown is small, but manageable and has the San Martin hexagon logo on it. Bracelet is their standard oyster bracelet and class combination that you may have seen on other watches from their range. Female end links help with fit. The links and the end links are solid. Screws hold the bracelet together and they were as easy to use as they always are. The clasp is the longer of the two that they offer with four holes of micro adjust. It has a milled upper, milled lower, high polished chamfered edges, twin push button release and the San Martin hexagon medallion set into that main surface. This bracelet is so much better than anything you will find on an Orient, a Seiko or a Citizen for the same money. As discussed, the dial is really dark grey rather than black. Everything is just printed on. It's nicely done though, it's crisp and it's all well proportioned. The hexagon logo is there again. I know some people don't like it, but I don't mind it now, I guess I'm used to it. Hands are flat, high polished silver in the Tudor Ranger tradition, of course, and there is a little red tip to the second hand, also in the Tudor Ranger tradition. On wrist, it feels good, nicely balanced, but also quite chunky feeling. 125 grams or thereabouts is spot on for this size and style of watch. And this is the size of a Tudor Ranger. So I'm not quite sure why the other two companies decided to go off script with the sizing of their own versions of the watch. Mini moans and niggles, Honestly, there is not much here to complain about. Maybe the finish around the lugs is a little bit sharp. Maybe it could be another $10 or $20 cheaper. Maybe it will be in the next big sale. Moving on to the Proxima then. This one comes in a nice box for the price they're charging, but I am not a fan of their unicorn logo. It may be the official national animal of Scotland, but it's also the official animal of six-year-old girls around the world, and that's the association that I make when I see a unicorn, I'm afraid. Proxima have offered me a bunch of watches, and I have refused every single one that has had a unicorn logo on the dial. Now, much like San Martin, there are various goodies concealed at the bottom of the case, including the links I removed, two full links and two half links by the way there are a couple of tools in here instruction manual and a signed dated warranty card as discussed it's slightly smaller than the san martin and therefore slightly smaller than the ranger coming in at 37.2 mil in diameter only 11.6 mil thick though because this one uses a pt5000 movement the pt5000 is a well-respected affordable clone of of the ETA 2824, which is nice and slim. Lug length is 45.6, lug width is again 20, with a 1618 taper, and weight is 120 grams exactly. Now it isn't advertised anywhere on the watch, but Proxima claimed 200 meters of water resistance. But the Proxima looks a little bit confused to be honest. The dial and hands are pure Ranger, but that's not a Ranger case, that's an Oyster style case. I mean, I like Oyster style cases, they wear fantastically neatly on wrist, but that's not the case that comes with the watch, this one is supposed to be homaging. I do appreciate the drilled lugs though, but I'm not as big a fan of the high polished bezel. That is gonna scratch quite easily. Again, it's not what the Tudor Ranger has either. Also, I'm not a fan of the unsigned crown, but at least that's preferable to a crown with a unicorn on it, I suppose. The bracelet's okay, again oyster style, again screw links, and with a similar looking clasp arrangement to the one on the San Martin, but almost every single element of this bracelet is inferior to the one on the San Martin. The upper clasp is only pressed and unsigned, no logo medallion here, and the triggers aren't nearly as nice as the San Martins. I say almost every element because the bracelet is quick release, something the San Martin cannot match. The dial is darker than the San Martin, but nothing is quite as nice. The font used is truer to the font used by the Tudor. It certainly looks a little more retro, but the printing isn't nearly as crisp. In fact, it's a little bit rough. This is one of Proxima's own press shots from the listing. Guys, this doesn't look great. I probably wouldn't include it in the listing if I was you, to be honest. I will give them a point back for the red tip of the second hand pushing all the way out to the edge of the dial, just like it does on the original watch. On wrist, it's fine. As I said, Oyster cases wear really nicely and it's slim. It's also well balanced. The clasp is the right size for a watch of this size. And there is a heap of adjustability with this one because of the inclusion of half links, as well as those four holes of micro adjustment. If you're a Goldilocks in terms of fitment, the Proxima definitely gives you the best shot at a perfect fit. Mini moans and niggles though, 
For exactly the same price as the San Martin, it doesn't feel nearly as nice. I appreciate this one has a high B auto, but I'm not sure that is a sufficient trade-off for a watch that is deficient in almost every area by comparison. It feels a tad unfinished as well, thanks to the unsigned crown and clasp. You can see the rough edges and the machining marks in the bracelet when you look at it down the links. And yeah, there's that whole oyster case thing as well. Watch three then is the Pagani, less than half the price of the other two. And that is reflected in the packaging. Don't bother with the big box, you're paying for nothing there, nothing worth talking about anyway. But I do love these little blue cloths though, my house is covered in the things. Three full-size spare links were removed to fit me, which means eight-inch wrists are possible with the Pagani. It seems that a signed and dated warranty card, though, is not, however, possible with a Pagani. They're always included, but never filled in. And it seems that Pagani also didn't get the memo that it was a Tudor Ranger they were copying here and not a vintage Explorer. Dial and hands are pure Ranger, but once again, this watch features an oyster case and a smaller oyster case than it should do if it was a one-for-one -one of the Tudor. It does have a cracking piece of top hat sapphire though, with blue anti-reflective undercoating. This is by far the nicest piece of glass I have ever seen on a Pagani so far. It's a real step up from their usual stuff. This one is smaller again at 36.8mm in diameter. It is the thickest watch here though at 136 because of that crystal and because of a display case back. Lug length is 44, lug width is 20, and again with a 1618 taper. Now like the San Martin, this watch is Seiko NH35 powered. Like the Proxima, it has a claimed 200 meters of water resistance and weighs an identical 120 grams. The case finish is fine for the money they're charging, even if it's not quite the right case. The sapphire, though, is borderline cartoonish because it is so tall and that purple-blue coating is ever-present. The crown is the smallest of all, but still functions and does screw down. The bracelet is another three-link oyster style with solid links, solid female end links, and screws holding it all together. You can feel the drop in quality, though, with the drop in price. And it's the same pain-in-the-ass clasp that Pagani use on virtually everything. These are not particularly well-made, have sharp edges, and are annoying to adjust. There are three possible holes on the inside of the clasp, but it's a bit of a fidget, to say the least. It does have Pagani's version of the EasyLink flip-flop system, though giving you maybe 5 mils of on-the-fly adjustment should you require it. If the Sapphire Crystal is a big step up for Pagani, then so is the dial as well. It's lovely. I don't think it's enamel. There's nothing in the listing to suggest that it is, but it looks like it is. It's so deep and rich looking. It looks way, way more expensive than any dial I've seen on a $100 watch before, and much nicer than the dials on the other two watches today, despite the price difference in their favor. It even has an applied Pagani logo, and the handset is nicely done. No rough edges to be seen under my macro lens. On wrist, you can see and feel that this one is thicker than the other two, but it doesn't feel ridiculous because of that short lug to lug and a similar weight overall. It does feel over clasped though. It's the biggest clasp today on the smallest watch today. I wish Pagani would come up with something different in the future. So, mini moans and niggles then. Well, the head of the watch is nicer than the bracelet. If you're gonna buy one of these and put it on a vintage brown leather, for example, I think this one will look better than either of the others. The bracelet's okay, but only just, and the watch is a touch thick. Now, I haven't shown you the loom yet, but the loom is a bit of a microcosm of the review as a whole. It plays out pretty much as you would expect it to do, given what I have just told you. The San Martin is the best made watch here by a margin, and that's reflected in the fact that it has the best loom here overall, but only just. The Proxima takes a different approach using BGW9 rather than old radium style, and it does pay dividends, but only when it comes to the hands. That rough dial printing is also pretty poor after dark. And the Pagani loom is not amazing, but for $100 you wouldn't really expect it to be, to be honest. So I could have saved you the trouble of watching the last 15 minutes and just showed you the loom video and called it a day, couldn't I? But where is the fun in that? So there you have it. If you're desperate for something that looks a lot like a Tudor Ranger, but for a lot less money, buy the Pagani. Seiko, Sapphire, 100 bucks. It both looks and feels pretty good on wrist as well. If you have more to spend and you will wear it regularly, then go for the San Martin. It's a big step up in quality, but at two and a half times the price of the Pagani, it should be.
which leaves the Proxima with the wooden spoon today. It feels unfinished and it doesn't feel nearly as well made as the San Martin for exactly the same asking price. But do bear in mind today, if you're prepared to spend $250, you're probably at 10% of the price of a used Ranger. I'm always more comfortable with homages when the price gap to the original watch is 10 grand rather than two and a half. If you want to compare a Pagani directly to a Rolex, click here. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again in a future video.